Hello. Hi, guys. Hello, hello. Today we are talking about the secret trick to saving at the grocery store. There is a secret trick. What is the secret trick, Mom? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me and we'll both know. All right. What is the secret trick? So, really, saving at the grocery store is super, super easy. And the number one to save ads. That's the secret trick. <laughs> now, you're going to say, well, Tara, that's no big deal. It's actually a very big deal. <laughs> um, it's fine if you have someplace like Aldi. What was it in Idaho? We had grocery outlet. Save yeah. a lot. Those kinds of stores are great. You don't need ads for those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But for the rest of the world who doesn't have those places, ads are the way to save money on your grocery bill. I do not even, and I don't meal plan using ads either. Mm -hmm. We've never meal planned using ads. A lot of people will go through the ads and say, oh, I want hamburger. We'll have chili this week or whatever. No, we don't do that. I keep my freezer and my pantry full with only with things that are on sale. There is not one meat in my freezer that was not purchased on sale. Not one. And so the only time I did purchase meat when it wasn't on sale, my 30 years of doing this, was in 20 late 2020 or early no yeah late 2020 early 21 when they thought there was going to be a major meat shortage i did go and buy a chicken or walmart um chicken for a dollar 99 a pound and i think i got like 30 pounds maybe and that was about 50 cents pound a pound more but it wasn't unreasonable for me because there might have been a shortage. But otherwise, we always, always buy on sale. Okay, so we're going to walk you through how to actually use your ads to save money on your groceries. Because there is a system to doing it. But it's not complicated. Mom and I were just talking about this, okay? Guys, this video is brought to you by our Dining on a Dime cookbooks. 35% off right now for our Saving of the Green sale for St. Patrick's Day that just was yesterday. Volume 1 is the red one. Volume 2 is the blue one. And the blue one is our gluten-free, dairy-free edition, which is adapted from Volume 1. If you only have one place to start, Volume 1 is the place to start, okay? 35% off right now. And then 50% off our ebooks and... 50% off our How to Save on Groceries e-course. Mm. We don't push that enough, but our How to Save on Groceries e-course is really, really stinking good, and you will save so much. And then our undated planners, 400 pages, guys, 365 days. They're undated, so you can start now. And check out the e-books. They're not very expensive. Most mm -hmm. of them aren't. I mean, a lot of them are like meal planning ones are a dollar. So you might check those out. And we have tons and tons of information. In Mary that. says, I do most of the things you recommend, and it makes a huge difference. Oh, you go, girl. Thank you, Mary, for letting thank us you. know that. Yeah. And it encourages others to know that these things mm -hmm. do work. Yep. yep. That we're Very just good. not full of hot air. <laughs> well, I am full of hot air, but it still works. <laughs> okay. So what is the system that we use? Every year in my town, Tuesday and Wednesday is when the ads come out, okay? So I look on Tuesday and see what's on sale at my one grocery store, and I look on Wednesday to see what's on sale at my other store. This is the ad for Albertsons and Ridley's. So this is my Tuesday ad, and this is my Wednesday ad. Al Ridley's and Albertsons. Now, I will just go through and see, okay, is my freezer getting low on something? Do I need something? Can I say something before? What I do is the day before the ads come out, I will go through my refrigerator and straighten it out. Usually if I do it every week, my refrigerator stays really pretty neat. 
-hmm. if you keep on top of it. People say, I don't want to clean my refrigerator. But that's because you do it once a year and it, and it's just a big, huge mess. If every week you just straighten the few shelves mm -hmm. where you got your food. Every day, just straighten. Well, yeah, every time I there. get through mm -hmm. with dinner, if I happen to go put something away in the refrigerator, I will straighten that shelf up. And so you just keep on top of it. Mm -hmm. So then specifically... The day before, I make sure everything mm -hmm. is neat and organized. And usually I don't have to spend even five minutes dinking with it because it stays that way. Yeah. But that way, One well. Second. Mike, I'm hearing feedback somewhere. I don't know where it's coming. Oh, it's coming to you. It's on. It off. Okay. Well, then just turn off my phone. Yeah. And so by doing that, when I'm looking through the refrigerator and straightening it up, I see what I need. You know, yeah. it, maybe I have five containers of butter in there, so I'm so thinking I, know I don't, need, I don't butter. need butter, yeah. you know, or the cheese or whatever. So do that first thing before you start and then get the ads. That's why I interrupted mm -hmm. you. Sorry. Yep. No. So that's where you need to start first is, is know what's in your refrigerator and knows what you need and what you don't need. I just don't go randomly buying stuff at the grocery store because I feel like eating it. I purposely am refilling my pantry and refilling my freezers. And all week long, I have a little piece of paper laying on my counter with a pen right there with it in the same spot. And every time I use something that I need to replace in my uh, prepping closet or just that I run out of in my kitchen, I write it down. So now I've got my paper there, my refrigerator's clean, mm -hmm. and then I go get the ads. Okay. So how do you use your ads? So first of all, for meal planning, mom and I both use a system where we basically eat the same 10 meals for spring and uh, summer and then the same 10 meals for fall and winter. We just rotate them. That's only three times a month. Then as you want to add in new stuff and try new stuff, just do that a couple of times a month. It doesn't have to be anything big. But by doing that, I only cook from my pantry. Now, let's say I think, oh, I'd like to have green chili, which Dining on a Dime, volume one, right here. We have the recipe, livingonadime.com. Go try it. It's a staple. We love green chili. It goes with so many things. But let's say I'm out of green chilies. Okay, is there some other kind of chili that I happen to have that I could use? Nope. Okay, then we're not eating green chili. Then we're going to have chicken noodle soup instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I do it. And so um, let's walk you through the ad here. Now, for this one, you can see this was just a few weeks ago. Chicken breasts, right? Oops. Uh, come on. Okay, chicken breasts right there were $1.57 a pound. Or $59 a pound, excuse me. So chicken breasts were $1.59 a pound. Now, because I know that $1.99 is my regular chicken breast price. That's a good price, not exceptional, but I'll buy it at that price. But this is a good price for me. If it was $1.49, it would be really good. Now, boneless, skinless chicken breasts. I'll look here, or I mean boneless, sorry. Uh, chicken drumsticks and thighs in quarters. $1.27 on sale at Albertsons. But guess what? Because I know my price, this is double what I would pay for normal, not sale price at Walmart for chicken uh, quarters. That's 69 cents a pound. That's almost double, not quite. So I know even though it's on sale, this is not a good deal <laughs> at, at all. So I would not stock up on that. That's why it's super important to know your prices. But then look here. Ground beef. $1.97 if you buy it in the 10-pound packages. Now, I have two boys. They love tacos and um, the hamburger casserole, volume one and two. I have both of those recipes. So I got the 10 pounds of hamburger. I knew that I, even without a kitchen right now, without a re, without the kitchen, I was able to cook up that 10 pounds in my instant pot on the saute, put it in my little packages, put it in my freezer. Now, um, I got this, when was this? Um, February 15th, so not quite a month ago. So for an entire month, I have been using this one 10 pound package of hamburger and I still probably have four meals 
worth left. I probably used it six times in a month. So just over one time a week, about every four or five days, I've cooked something with ground beef. But by doing it that way, literally it takes me five minutes to make dinner. I pull that already cooked packet out of the fridge, or I mean out of the freezer, throw it in the microwave, warm it up, warm up the taco shells, cut up the lettuce, get the salsa out, or Mike's Taco Bell sauce, and dinner is ready with some baby carrots or sliced apples and oranges. Literally five minutes. And see, by doing your hamburger up like this, usually I do mostly hamburger. Sometimes I'll cook up some of the chicken. But I love to keep the hamburger cooked up like this because people were, somebody mentioned last night about having to clean up the mess after cooking. After cooking. I just spilled her tea everywhere. And to clean up the mess, always having to clean up that mess. What I do is one, it doesn't even take me hardly 34, 34, five minutes at the most, usually not even that much, to fry up a five pound thing of hamburger and get it all fried up. I make it into patties. I use the same pan and I fry it. Meatballs. Then meatballs. And then I take and put the crumbled chicken, you know, for uh, just for tacos and stuff like that, using the same hamburger pan. And I get it all fried up. Now, when I get ready to do dinner for, like Tara said, for a whole month, I don't have a greasy, dirty hamburger mm -hmm. pan to clean. I don't have a greasy, dirty stove to clean up and all that type of thing. That was done one time. And now it's just like very simple to fry a, or to fix up your dinner. You, For me, anyway, personally, that one greasy pan that you have to always cook the meat in is the pan I hate to do. I don't mind washing out a salad bowl. I don't even mind washing the plates. Of course, I hand wash and most people do, you know, the um, dishwasher. But even at that... If you fry something on the stove or boil something on the stove, it boils over. You've got a mist to clean that whole stove. This gets rid of the stove mist and the pans, part of the, you know, a good mm -hmm. portion of it. So you don't need to make it complicated. Okay. Now the next thing is I have noticed in the last probably five to 10 years that the grocery stores have been doing something very interesting with their ads. So if you look, let's see, is this the right, I hope that's not, did I not bring the right one? So what I've been noticing is, um, okay, I brought the wrong ad, I apologize, but let me just show you here. So the ad before this one, milk was $1.49 a gallon. So what I've been noticing is they will put something on sale for my stock up price for $1.49 a gallon. But then the next week, it's $1.97 a gallon on sale. And even though that's still a fairly decent price for milk, I mm. mean, if I was out of milk and didn't need it, I would buy it for the sale price. But what I'm noticing the grocery stores are doing is, like the hamburgers $1.97 in this ad right here. The next week, it was two thirty-seven mm -hmm. because what they're doing is they're putting it on sale for the next week. Was this the one? I don't know, but that has twenty-seven. Um, oh yeah, this is it. This is it. Oh no, no, that's not the right one. But anyway, it's close. So like, it's it's not the same uh, dates. I I left the other one at home or, or over at the house, but you can see here a dollar ninety-seven. And then here it's 287. And I think what they're doing, <laughs> the sneaky grocery stores, <laughs> I think what they're doing is they're timing it that way in case when they make a massive order for their sale, they don't sell it all. Then it still looks like it's on sale yeah, it the makes next it look week. Like it's still on sale. And it is on sale compared to regular price, yeah. but it's not a good stock up price. So if you miss, so my point for that is if you miss a sale, don't get too upset because it might, the price might go up again in the next, the price might go up the next week, but it may still be a better deal than buying it at full price. So just watch. Now, the next thing, go ahead and put your questions in guys. And Mike is going to send them to me. The next thing is ask for rain checks. Mm-hmm. 
at, people don't ask for rain check, but a rain check is something they will give you if they're out of something. They will give you a piece of paper saying you can get it for this price when it comes back into stock. Now, Albertsons now does not give rain checks on meat. Yeah. They won't give they you stopped. a rain check on meat, but they will give you a rain check on everything else. Yeah. And so you have to be. And one thing I do with the rain checks is they'll maybe have one package of what I'm wanting and I can get four of them or whatever. Or maybe I didn't couldn't get in to get or couldn't for some reason didn't get that, but I have 30 days now to buy the same, use the same sale ad is basically what it amounts to. Mm -hmm. You see, instead of having to get every, the sale stuff that one week, it's mm -hmm. kind of nice to get a rain check because then yeah. I have a whole month to get yeah, it. Yeah. And that's what I do. So like if, especially if there's no limit, mm -hmm. you can use that really. And if you get a rain check, ask for double what you need. So oh, like yeah. if I was going to buy 10 boxes of Cheerios, I would ask for a rain check limit of 20 because they'll ask you how many do you want and i'll say oh give me 20 boxes and the reason why i do that is because for a couple of reasons if i find out wait a minute i forgot that was like an exceptional deal and i didn't realize how exceptional it was or oh here's those coupons that i had for the cheerios and i can use those cheerios coupons on these boxes and get it for even cheaper or i call mom and say do you need any cheerios She's like, yeah, so then she doesn't take out of my 10 boxes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I can pick up boxes for her or someone else if they need them. Mm -hmm. And so always think you might use more yeah. than you need. I always get way more. You can always buy less. Yeah, you don't have to buy the amount that's on the rain check. And so that's... For the rain checks, that's pretty much how we do it. Now, the next thing is, if you want to get the good deals in the ads, go the day the ads come out, especially the morning the ads come out. I'm noticing now that grocery stores are not stocking up they don't have on their ads mm -hmm. near as much. And they are running out, at least here in our town, a lot. Because for them, most people don't know about rain checks. Mm -hmm. And so they don't ask, so they don't have, they get people into the store. That's what the, the uh, ads are for is to get people into the store. And they know if they get people into the store, even if the sales stuff isn't there, half the time people will buy more stuff. Mm -hmm. So they don't mind running out. It doesn't bother them, mm -hmm. you know, and because most people don't bother to do the rain checks. Now for me, I sometimes get a little sneaky, <laughs> but Hey, that's just, that's the name That's of the game. Cleverness. <laughs> You're being clever. <laughs> if there's something that I want, but I don't have space for it or something like that, I'll go on a day like Saturday mm -hmm. afternoon, yeah. Sunday afternoon, when I know they will be out of it. <laughs> go in, make sure they're out of it, and ask for a rain check. Yeah. So that I know that later. Or maybe I stocked up enough for this month, but I don't have enough space or something for next month, but it was a really good deal on something. So then next month, when I get more space, I could put that in there. Or sometimes like it's on sale, but I know I'm going to have company in a week. And so I don't want to buy it right then. So if I wait, I can go in later and get it closer to the date that I need it. And it'll be fresh, you know, for me to mm -hmm. use. Yeah. Now, guys, all of these tips, they're in. Our Dining on a Dime cookbooks right now on sale, 35% off for our Saving of the Green sale. It is our St. Patrick's Day sale. We just, it was yesterday, volume one and volume two. Start with volume one. These tips are all the basic tips to help you save money. I had one lady, her first trip to the grocery store, she saved $250. The first trip. She was totally shocked because she didn't realize all of the things that she was doing wrong, grocery shopping. Then if you're gluten-free, dairy-free right here, that's me. All the recipes are tested. You know they will work. And then our planners are 10% off, guys, undated, so you don't lose any dates. And our eBooks are 50% off right now. And one thing too, guys, all this information may be a little bit overwhelming, but just take a deep breath. And do a little bit of time. You won't know all the prices. So maybe you'll start out and think, 
I'm just going to use my ad to get hamburger or on sale. Chicken or, or whatever chicken, your main whichever. meat is. Pick one or two things, and for a couple of weeks, just do that until you get the prices memorized and figured out. Then move on to maybe a couple of vegetables mm -hmm. or fruits or something. So pace yourself. Take it slow. It's like starting a brand new job. If any of you have ever started a new job, those first two weeks are a living nightmare, trying to learn all the information, figure out how what, what to do, and you want to quit. And that's what happens a lot of times is people get this information and be overwhelmed, which I can understand. It is a lot of information, but you just give up. But if you just pace yourself, do a small amount, and keep doing it, it's it'll. Tara and I can rattle off numbers and prices and how much we've got in our pantry. We can do that just off the top of our head. We know the prices, but we just didn't learn this last week. You mm -hmm. know, it takes time. Right now, most of you can go and get up in the morning and go in. You automatically brush your teeth, wash your face and comb your hair. When you were three year old, three year, three year, three, how do you say it? Three years, years old. old. <laughs> your mom had to tell you, go brush your teeth and show you how to do it. No, the next day you still didn't do it right. She had to show you again and again. She did this for a long time. Now you do it without even thinking. And the same stuff will come start doing being the same way for you. You'll just do it automatic without even thinking. I do stuff and I think I can't believe that I just did this without even mm -hmm. thinking about it. Yeah. So pace yourself. Take a deep breath and you can do it if you do it slowly. Mm -hmm. If nothing else, just getting your refrigerator cleaned out and writing this stuff on a note on a piece of paper of what you need. With for some of you, that may be all you can start with, you know, at first. So next thing is ask when the trucks come. So if mm. they run out of stuff, I know that our local store here called Ridley's, their trucks come Friday morning. So like Friday at nine or ten o'clock. You can bet I'm there asking if they have X product that they were out of that I wanted or needed. And that's really good for places. Some grocery stores don't do rain checks anymore. Yeah. So knowing that, that's really good for the places that don't do rain checks. Then you'll be almost guaranteed to get mm -hmm. the ad yeah. stuff. Now, don't be a grocery snob. If chicken is, is $3 a pound, but... Pork roast is $1.97 on pound this week. You're going to be eating pork, pork if you don't have a stockpile. The way you save money on your grocery bill is by eating what's on sale and not just what you want. I would love to have steak every day. I would eat a steak every single day and I would be okay with that. But guess what? I'm not paying the steak prices for me to eat every single day. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. Um, so make sure that you're not being persnickety. <laughs> and I know all these people, well, you only live once or I work so hard. Oh, that's the one. I work hard. Oh, my goodness. Don't get me started on that one. These people who say they work hard and they deserve to eat whatever they want. Listen, since time began, man and woman have been work. Men and women have been working hard since time began probably a whole lot harder than you ever worked in your life. And so they didn't have the creature comforts of laundry, um, washing machines and dish dishes in the dishwasher and stuff like that. And so you got to get over this mentality that, well, I work hard, so I deserve it. Well, so what if you work hard? Everybody deserves it. You all deserve <laughs> it, but can you afford it? That's what the thing is. Can you afford it? And so, and so just because you work hard doesn't mean that that gives you the right to just go buy whatever you want. If you're in debt and then hock up to your eyeballs and you have to cut your grocery um, bill, then you're going to have to do what you can to cut your grocery bill. Okay. Mike, send me the first question. And as well, I don't know um, if I'm jumping to hit or anything, but sometimes people talk about being uh, healthy. So I buy salmon you know, because I can be healthy. It's healthy for you. Tuna is much cheaper. So you may have to buy tuna. You can't eat the salmon anymore. You have to eat the tuna. So you, that's another form of the snob stuff, mm -hmm. you know, that you, you may have to just eat something to replace it like that. And if you have to eat beans and rice, you got to eat beans and rice. <laughs> 
Now, you don't have to eat beans and rice. No. That's the whole point of this. That's actually why I wrote the book because <laughs> Dave Ramsey and us both came out at the same time and he kept telling people that you got to eat beans and rice. I'm like, no, you don't. I was get, I got so mad because I'm like, stop telling people they have to eat beans and rice. It's a life straight from the pit of hell. You do not have to eat beans and rice to save on your grocery bill. As, as poor as we were, we never had beans and rice, did we? We never ate beans. No, we never had it. So We never, ever ate beans because my mother would not let a bean touch her lip. <laughs> well, baked beans, but uh, not. Yeah, baked beans. But they have so much sugar in them. I put lots of sugar in them. That it's more... It's more uh, a few beans with your sugar, <laughs> sugar with your beans. Donna says she purchased volume one and two, the printed book yesterday in the ebook planner, both. Oh, thanks. thank you. Appreciate that. I hope I'm you so enjoy glad you those. get those on sale. Mm -hmm. Tanya, sometimes grocery stores put stuff at regular price in the ad, helping people will think it's on sale. It's yeah. called suggestion on sale. Exactly. That's why knowing your prices is really important here and don't. Don't panic. Just learn yeah. a few prices every week and you'll get it there. Sharon says, I freeze cooked hamburger meat too. Makes things so much easier. Yes. It's like night and day mm -hmm. with cooking. Yeah. I mean, I used to dread cooking myself until I started doing this method. Mm -hmm. And actually the way I started doing it originally was I would cook up a pound, just one pound. We didn't have the five pound blocks ever back then. Mm -hmm. You just cook one pound at a time. And what I would do is take like, three or four tablespoons of that cooked meat and put it in a container in the freezer. So that's the way I originally started doing this. Mm -hmm. And then I found out how handy that was just to have those, you know, that in there. And then I started doing the, you know, whole bunch cooking it up. Now, um, somebody said, what is a chub? I missed who that was. So can you see that long roll of meat right Big here? Long roll of hamburger. See that? Or mince, it's a long, meat. What it's do they a call long, it in England? it's a long roll of, ground beef they usually come in five, five or ten pounds yeah usually three, three five, five and ten pounds is how they come in the united states i don't know where it would be in the rest of the world but whatever one kilogram maybe i don't know two kilograms i don't know <laughs> um and so it's a big roll and people say oh well that's so long well this took me about 30 minutes to cook 10 pounds of hamburger oh yeah all at once i had 10 meals worth of hamburger all cooked up, done, so that for that 30 minutes, and what I did was I started cooking it for our dinner, and then while we were eating, I just left the rest of it cooking, and by the time we were done with dinner, it was all finished. Yeah, you just have all your little plastic baggies lined up, yeah. and you while it's cooking, you get that all ready, and then it'll, it cooks up really fast when you do the ground yeah. hamburger and you just scoop it in put it in a big bag then all together and mm -hmm. Esther says done. I'm in California and we have an Albertsons I wish they were having that special at mine but the ad doesn't show up well it may not this week but it may next week yeah you, I mean might. see this it rotates these this is like from January no this is December through February December through March is the ads that I have here um, terrific Tosh Tarsha says, I used your hamburger preparation tip this week, also portioning it into the food seal bags or yeah, the fold and seal. I mean, and sorry, I got my new glasses today and I can't get them figured <laughs> out and putting everything inside the freezer gallon bag is brilliant. Saves so much money on bags. Yes. Oh my goodness. Mom and I have this thing about people <laughs> using so many freezer bags. It's like, those things are so stinking expensive and you do not have to use expensive freezer bags for all this stuff. I have never bought a box of freezer bags because they're just too expensive, but I seem to accumulate them. People give me stuff, you know, in them and those I will kind of wash out, but no, just use the little plastic baggies with the, with no zipper or anything like that. The cheapy, cheapy ones put them in case, cause we didn't explain it all totally. You just put the hamburger in there for like whatever you need for one meal and then put all of those little bags in one large plastic bag or even a plastic container, you know, since I don't use those, I put mine in a plastic vacuum container. So, mm -hmm. um, Sherry says I'm in Canada, so everything is more expensive. Sorry, Sherry, but that's just not true. <laughs> I was thinking that Why don't you show yourself on since you can. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's a weird thing. Uh, <laughs> Oops, let's see if I can. Mute your, your computer. 
There we go. Okay. I was going to say for Canada, because Tara's done price, she's compared the prices before. And when she compares the price, sometimes the Canadian price looks a little bit higher. But then if you consider the difference between U.S. dollars and Canadian dollars, it's usually the same. Sometimes it's a little bit more. And sometimes a lot of times it's, it's less. less. Yeah. yeah. And so it sounds like when Tara says, I got this for $10, and in Canada you're like, well, wow, it's $12 for me. Well, that's the same. The exchange that's rate. The, yeah. the exchange rate, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes when you, if it seems like it's more, that would be the issue. Yeah. And – I've had, I'm sorry, I've had viewer after viewer after viewer. I will have all these people say, I'm in Canada, so it costs me so much. And then I'll have all these people, I'm in Canada, and my groceries are a whole lot cheaper than yours. <laughs> so it's just not true. I'm sorry. But and for the 48 states in the United States and Canada, yes, you can get these prices. Now, I'll give you Alaska and Hawaii because it has to be shipped in, so it is more expensive. But all the rest of the U.S. And, and Canada, you can get these prices if you want to. I have proven time and time again, you just don't want to look hard enough. And even if you, unfortunately, even if they are just slightly higher, what people don't realize, when you live in different areas, sometimes maybe the groceries were slightly more, but the utilities were way less, or the housing prices. It all seems to balance out. I've lived, I've lived 35 times in my life, and I don't care where I lived. I practice all these tips. It has nothing to do with the prices. I practice all these tips of checking the ads wherever I'm at, turning my heat, you know, down wherever I'm at. I do all these tips, and that's what saves the money. And try not to focus on, well, this is cheaper here or there or that. If you get caught up in that, you won't be able to step forward and do anything to help yourself because it's, once again, trying to kind of make an excuses not to oh, really all excuses me. not to really you know work <laughs> at getting these things done so just you know just look at it that way and then janet says i never knew you could cook and freeze hamburger i'm so glad i found your channel yes, yes. you can barbara wants to know is it better to buy a chub of ground beef or the package where you see the meat well i have never i have never ever ever had an issue buying beef at all so i just get whatever whatever is the cheapest is the cheapest and, and if I don't it's care that how bad, much the fat or anything like that. I just, yeah. Yeah. And, and I have shown before, and maybe I'll do this as another video again, but I've shown the 73% um, hamburger is way cheaper than the 80 or 90%. People say, oh, I get 80 or 90% because it cooks out all of that fat. And so then you're just losing all that money. No, it's not true. It is just not true. And so... Um, even with the fat cooked out, the amount of meat left over per pound is still cheaper to get the 70 or 73, whatever percent. Um, and if the meat is that bad, if I were to open a chub and it yeah. would be brown, you can guarantee I'd take it, take back, it back to the store. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would take it and back if to you, the store. If you're in a situation where you can't take it back that day, I, what I've done before is I've called the store and say, this was bad when I bought it. And I can I bring it in next week because I, you know, have to drive way into town or whatever. And they'll always say, oh, yes, that's fine. And they just make note of it. And they said, bring your receipt. And they've never given me any trouble. Greta, yeah. what? I found the link to that video. I'm just sure that where you showed it. Oh, okay. Mike just shared the link to that video where I compared the meat prices. Greta, my store ad says, while supplies last or no rank checks. Yeah, some of them will. Yeah. That's why it's good to go on the first day. Like yeah. the first morning. That's when you would find out when the trucks come in and then you go first thing. That's what we were talking about for some things like that. But UCF mom says that mom says the Publix markets started giving rate checks again. They stopped in 2020, but now they're starting again. Well, that's interesting. I wonder why they stopped. Oh, supply chain issues. That's right. Uh, Diane, I never thought to get a rain check until you mentioned it a few weeks ago. Very good. Mm. She got chuck roast for $249 a pound. Very yeah. good. I have, Sandra says, I've been sick with um chronic fatigue syndrome since 99 and have horrible brain fog tara do you and jill have brain fog if so what helps mm -hmm. yeah i mean there's a lot of things you can do for that but um go back and watch our chronic fatigue syndrome videos we've got a whole list like five or six videos of our cfs videos what and we you do can to watch help that, yeah, with that type we of thing that. we do a lot of alka-seltzer yeah that helps sometimes mm -hmm. 
And food allergies are a big one. That helped me a lot when I got rid of certain foods that were causing so issues. You'll have for to try me. some of the different things that we mentioned in there. Barbara, so thank you for the free ebook or for the free ebook price book. You are welcome. I'm glad you <laughs> like that. Nancy, if our store is a good sale in meat, I call and ask if they have it in before I go. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Same. Our grocery store ads on Wednesday. Can you send me the next ad, Mike, or the next load? Our grocery ads start on Wednesday, but Thursday is the best day for our stores to have the sale meets in stock. Yes, that's you and learn. Yeah. You'll learn, learn the system of your stores. Store. Yeah. And we're not saying you need to go to five or ten stores. You pick two or three grocery stores that you normally go to and focus on those. I don't shop at the same grocery stores every week. I Occasionally, I'll hit the three grocery stores in my town in a week, but that's a very, very rare occasion. Like, I'll go get Albertsons, whatever they have on meat this week, and then usually Ridley's doesn't have anything. So then I don't go to Ridley's that week. So you just... And keep your eyes open. Like, Friday, I went... I never go on Friday afternoon. And I went to, um, to our Mike's store, and the bakery had put everything from their bakery stuff onto the clearance rack. It was like one o'clock on Friday afternoon because they were wanting to clear that stuff out, I think, for the weekend to put fresh out. I didn't know that. I found found that out. So now I know when they put their clearance up for their bakery things and their breads and stuff. And so start learning your store. If you're not finding anything on the clearance rack and things like that, try a different time. You can always ask like the people at the bakery or the butcher, when do you, you know, put your clearance stickers on? When do you do um, your, put your clearance yeah. stuff out? So, and they'll tell you a lot. Yeah, of they times. tell you. And, but if you, they, if they don't tell us, if you can't find anybody to tell you, just try two or three different times and a few different days until you find, I went and when I first moved here into town, I started watching to find out when they put all their milk stuff on clearance because there's certain times in the morning at like nine 30 or 10, I'll go in on a certain day and, you know, whipped cream, milk, uh, cottage cheese, everything's marked down 50%. Mm -hmm. So you get to learn your grocery stores. She also, Nancy also said, when I called the store to see if they had the meat in stock, they asked me how many pounds she wanted and they held it for her. Wow. Wow. That's good. I can't believe they did that. I have never heard of a store doing that. Well, but it my, pays to ask. Albertson's here. I was wanting something from the bakery and er, every time I went in, they were gone. And she said, oh, just give us a call and we'll hold it back for you. Yeah. And it was on sale. And so she did. Well, and get to know the people and talk yeah, be to, nice them. to them. You know, and, yeah, visit like with, with all of my restore, <laughs> with all of my <laughs> restore visits for my remodel to get I've gotten to know the people really well. And I got a phone call from one of the guys the other day and they're like, Hey Tara, we just got this in. Are you still looking for it? And I was like, Oh, thank you so much. But I had already found it. You guys got it in last week and I got that one. And he's like, okay, just thought I would check. And so I was like, you know, they, they will do that if they know you and they talk to you. Yeah. And like my restore knows that <clears throat> like when I say I'm going to come get something, I'm going to come get it. They know that something major has happened. I don't blow them off yeah. when I say I want something and I'm going to come get it because I've been reliable in going and getting the stuff after I've gotten it. I don't let it sit there for two weeks waiting for me. You know, well, they don't really allow that, but you know what I mean? And so kindness, it's the same. kindness goes a long way and being trustworthy goes a long way and getting to know these people, you know, they and do it sincerely. I don't just chit chat just to get something from them. Yeah, no, you know, I bit. I see them every week. So I visit with them, you know, and talk to them and everything. So mm -hmm. don't just get mad. Well, that was on sale and it, I didn't find it on the shelf. So now what am I supposed to eat? Well, if you're talking like that, nobody's going to do anything for you, you know? Nope. So Sandra, if you do store pickup, make sure the coupons that you loaded onto your loyalty card is applied. I find mistakes all the time. I recently had a $25 credit applied. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Check your receipts too. For All the, the time. Food. I have to watch the receipts. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. Probably 80, 85% of the time I go to the store. Now what I do up wrong. is because I know the ladies, I'll say, will you watch that and make sure all the things that are on sale gets on my receipt for me? And they say, sure. And as soon as they get done, they go through it and check for me. So, you know, that really helps. 
especially with all these dumb digital coupons. I oh, the digital coupon. I know. I know. <sighs> Straight from the pit of hell. <laughs> digital coupon. Uh, Actually, it's funny. Everybody's hollering about this digital currency stuff and everything. People, we're already 95% yeah. digital at the moment. Really, if we go digital, not a whole lot is going to be changing except that they can literally control your money, which yeah. is major, and I get that. But they're already controlling your money. Like, you can't go to the bank and just withdraw $20,000 if you want to withdraw no, $20,000 now. So, Oh, my bank in Wichita wouldn't let me take out $3,000. Ridiculous. So. All right. That's a whole nother show, though. All right. <laughs> a word of hope. I have a dishwasher and don't use it very often. It's only two of us. Yep. And they eat beans and rice a lot. Well, there mm -hmm. you go. <laughs> I use my dishwasher to store things in. That's what I do with mine. Well, I told Mike in this kitchen remodel, if it wasn't for Mike and the boys, I wouldn't have gotten a dishwasher. I really don't like using the dishwasher. I would rather just do the load of dishes that I have and be done with it and put it up than to have to deal with loading and unloading the dishwasher all the time. I hate unloading the dishwasher. Well, I'm getting off track now, so don't shoot me. But I watched the thing about these ladies. Some of you may have heard me telling the st story about they, I watched this YouTube and the thing is they're doing 40 and 50s housewives. They want to act like a 40 and 50 housewife. <laughs> and so they dress like that, you know, and of course I was laughing because they were I don't, going Grandma by, never wore high no. heels vacuuming. <laughs> Half the time, my mom never wore a dress in the 50 to do her cleaning. And so there's, they're going by magazines and these perfect books, you know. How many of us have magazine perfect houses, you know? And But this is what they're going by. But anyway, the gal said at the end of her week of doing, acting like a 1950s, 40s housewife, she said, you know what I love the most? was my kitchen stayed clean all the time. And I noticed this, and yeah. to hear somebody else say this, I thought, this I'm not wrong on this. This is so true. What mm -hmm. happens is people let all their dishes pile up in the sink, mm -hmm. all over the counter, and then after dinner that night, they go all day long with these dirty dishes, and then after dinner, they put all the dishes in the dishwasher for one big, huge load of dishes. In the, that was one good thing about the 50s. What we did is I would get up in the morning. As soon as breakfast was, was over, I did the dishes. dry, And, you know, a lot of times dried them, put them up. And my counters were all washed and clean. After I got through with lunch, made sure everything with dishes were all washed. And there were small amounts. These weren't big, huge meals. So what didn't take me that long? As soon as dinner was over, we all got up, you know, countertops clean, dishes washed. And I went all day long with no dishes. If I would bake or something during the day and I had just a small handful, they would automatically get washed and put in the you know dish drain or whatever and cleaned up. And I didn't realize this has started since people have been doing dishwashers. They have messy kitchens. That's why we got the dirty dishes caused debt in our, um, our first cookbook. We've got a whole article on how dirty dishes cause debt. And that's part of what started it, you know. Pirate Lincoln says a stay-at-home mom saving two thousand dollars a month for her family of four on a police budget thanks to us. Wow! <laughs> You're the testimonial. Yeah, of the year. that is good. And see, it is so. I get so frustrated with how many people we say you can't live on one income and you can't you know actually pirate email me go to livingonadime.com and click on the contact form and email me and tell you how and i will give you um, a coupon for our, our store because i'm curious what you've saved where that tooth i mean i can imagine daycare and stuff like daycare is probably a thousand dollars right there but let me know because i'm curious what you've actually saved on your budget and, but that. we have yeah. lots of people that have are living on one, you know, income. And I've always lived on one income. I've never had two incomes. And so, you know. Margaret says she's a handicapped senior. She rides around the store for entertainment <laughs> for deals. <laughs> hey, whatever floats your boat. That's good. Last week, she got a huge beef brisket. The original price was $74 for $28. That's wow, great. that's good. You keep, you keep riding around there because you're getting some good deals. I think you need to hook a wagon onto hook the back a wagon of that thing. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> you see that video? Oh my goodness. Mm, yeah, That's I wonderful. could see that a video like that. People would just die. Our um our contractor was playing 80s music. <coughs> <Are> you okay. 
<laughs> you can go into the bathroom. <laughs> Uh, she, she's fine. She took a drink wrong. Mom and I both do that. We drink and it goes down the wrong tube. But anyway, our contractor was playing eighties music. He's only like 30, but he said that his dad used to play it all the time with him when they were doing contracting stuff and they were playing grease. And I was like, yeah, I should, I think Mike and I should do the grease theme song as a video. <laughs> that would be hilarious. All right, Sandra recipes call for a pound of meat. I use a half a pound. Yes. That's what we have been doing forever. Mm forever that's one of our first tips that we always gave people that's in volume okay. one guys and hold this place. and when you do the half a pound <laughs> take about two or three tablespoons <clears throat> out of that half a pound this is something you're sneezing blowing well, I wouldn't your take, nose. no i would take two or three tablespoons out of a half a pound maybe yeah a pound. i can i always I would. did that's well, really good well sticky. it depends on the size of your family too you know we had four and i would take the couple of tablespoons and put in there. What did you think I did? We've always given that tip. Well, not for a half a pound, though. I would for a pound of meat. Like, I would <clears> use three quarters of a pound if we're Well, I guess four. what I should say is I cook up a half a whole pound. And then I would take two or three tablespoons out of that whole pound. Yeah. And then I would split yeah. that. So it wasn't just for the half. That's how you would do it. You cook the pound, put two tablespoons in the container, and then just use half of that. Volume okay. one and volume two go together, guys. Money saving tips galore. There's over 1,200 recipes and tips in volume one, 800 in volume two, and then our gluten free, dairy free edition. All of these are on sale right now for our saving of the green cell right here. Saving of the green cell, and our ebooks are 50% off. Mm. All right. Um, Karen says one of my favorite tips is to pre cook meats, making her own seasonings. Yes, right here, volume one. And volume two are all of our, my seasoning mixes. <laughs> um, but I have never bought taco seasoning ever in my entire life. I have never bought any of those little rectangle square, whatever those packages are in the store. I've never, ever, ever bought one of those. I've used them only because my neighbors were moving and they gave me some, but I don't buy those. I, we just make our own homemade seasonings because it's so fast and so quick. Instead of a dollar, I can do it for five cents. So why do that, you know? Uh, Debbie wants to know, do you use freezer bags or food savers? So here's the thing. Mom says she doesn't buy freezer bags, but she does use food saver, a vacuum sealer. Yeah, I use canning jars usually. And then I have special plastic containers that are made for the vacuum sealer that I got at a garage sale. I got several of those. And so that's what I usually use. You use bags for a long time. I use, yeah, dry, I used to for use a lot a, of dry stuff. Usually. I used to use the bags uh, all the time before I was able to get my jars and my other things. And so I do use a bag once in a while, but um, now I use mostly those containers. And she's just saved up at yard sales and thrift stores that have had the vacuum containers mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Uh, Margaret says, just because one buys on sale doesn't mean you have to eat it all week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can freeze it and eat it in a couple of weeks. That's totally I'm fine. glad you brought that up because that's what people think. If they buy something on sale, that's all they're going to eat for a week or more. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, Leah says, I got debt-free with our help in 2019. That oh, is great. Good. Wow. wow. Good job. My glasses look well, nice. Thank you very much, Sandra. She got them adjusted today. Um, that's along with that is what happens is you're not going to be eating hamburger and hamburger. When you start buying things on sale, you buy maybe a month's worth of chicken if it's on sale this week. And then you'll have bought a month's worth of hamburger on sale the week before. And then the next week you might buy some roast. So you've got those three things of meat that'll last you, you know, like three months or whatever, depending on what you got. And you just rotate it with your recipes in. Mm -hmm. Anyone tried the Roma laundry detergent from Walmart? I like it. I have not. Mm -mm, I haven't tried that, so it's good. I don't know. Mm. Um, Magnanimous says, I'm making 15 bean soup with smoked sausage and cornbread. Oh, that oh. sounds good, actually. Mm. I used to not like beans because my mother made me prejudiced <laughs> against them. But since living with Michael, I have He's learned that you. I like beans, actually. 
LB's. Actually, we've got a uh, what is it? Bean goulash. Mm -hmm. Oh well, yeah, in volume oh, one. Oh, the bean, bean goulash. goulash. Living it on a dime. Like what you're making. Yeah, livingonadime.com. Go. The recipe's there. The bean goulash. Yeah. The bean That's goulash. That's my sister-in-law's recipe. You put in um, bacon. <laughs> it's got you, bacon. <laughs> yeah, it has barbecue sauce, like, and everything. It's so like it's a really barbecue good. bacony, but it's not real. It's not real. It's sweet, but it's not real sweet. Yeah, but yeah. But it's it, it. Even I on the bean goulash. It's I more like baked beans, kind of. I didn't eat the beans, but I ate the syrup stuff and everything that was in there. <laughs> LB says I was shopping each week. I was shopping each week for that week. Now I only shop sales for stocking up and uh, shop for the week in my stockpile down $200 a month wow. because she followed what we teach. Thank you. You are welcome. Oh, I am so glad it's helping somebody. I know. Carissa, well, I made the baking mix. I messed up the measuring, the mix for the biscuits. They turned out pretty good. I, If I had not mixed up the measurements, it might have been great. <laughs> Yeah, oh, but you cute. know what? What you can do in that situation is because it's the same recipe. As you, if you mess it up, just add a little bit of more, just add a little bit of milk and just put it in a muffin pan, and you have mus muffins instead of biscuits. A little bit of sugar and a little bit of milk, and then you have muffins instead of biscuits. So, Terry, I have used my cereal bags as freezer bags. That's a great mm -hmm. idea. Good yeah. idea. Really good. Uh, Joanna says we've changed grocery store now because of the amount of soon expired food. Oh yeah, uh, that would be a problem. But she lives in Sweden. Mm -hmm. Mike, can you send me the next batch? Um, yeah, and you guys probably are having a harder time right now with everything going on over there that yeah. you probably have a harder time getting stuff. Um, Sandy, there are, are good prices on groceries in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not don't kidding. don't want to cause a fight on here or anything. I'm not kidding, though. Every time a Canadian tells me how they can't find grocery prices, I have 15 other people who say, I got news for them. I even have one lady email me this really long email with a lot of details about how she would come to the United States for work and she would bring her food from Canada because mm -hmm. it was so much more expensive here mm -hmm. for her than one. Canada. Yeah. It was a really interesting email. Um, Magnanimous says, Jiffy Cornbread Mix is 64 cents, just like Grandma made. Yeah, but if you want a really good cornbread mix, it's oh. even better than Jiffy. Oh, my goodness. You well, know why one. it's better than well, It takes a, lot a of sugar. whole thing of butter, too. Butter and sugar. But butter and sugar like you can't <laughs> even imagine. But oh. it's on our it's on our um, website, livingonadime.com. You can go get that recipe. That cornbread recipe is so good. I always put, uh, I use the Jiffy Mixes in different recipes, and I always put syrup on my cornbread when I eat it. And that cornbread is so good, I don't even use syrup on it because it's just yeah, it's unreal. Really good. Mm -hmm. I should make some of that. That actually I know, I haven't good. made I haven't any had... for a while either. Let's see, I could make cornbread muffins in the toaster oven. Oh, but we got our oven in yesterday. Can you use it now? We can use it. <laughs> we have no sink, but we have the oven. <laughs> I totally forgot. So now I can start baking stuff again, sort of. Well, if I can find everything. Yeah, I was going to say you, all the dishes are in boxes. I'm, oh, never mind. I, I almost blew Mike's parents' idea. Okay. <laughs> Todd, I keep my house at 55 in Minnesota. Never had pipes freeze issue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they I, shouldn't. People worry about that if they keep it down too low. So I'm glad you made, told them that because they worry that the pipes are going to freeze. But Sorry for the sniffling, guys. I took my day quill two hours did. ago. I would think it would be kicking in, but She's it's not. She's getting worse. Angel on a mission says we have one grocery store. Walmart is in the next town over 22 miles. So we just stop at our short store and hit the sales unless we are already at Walmart. But I think they are high on some things. Yeah, Walmart isn't always cheaper. Mm -hmm. It's not. In Colorado, I hardly ever bought groceries at Walmart. Now, I had one period of time where it was extremely stressful for my family. And that was when they first started doing their online ordering. And I started doing that. And I just made sure I got all generics and everything. And then I just went and got meat at the grocery stores when it was on sale, but everything else I got at Walmart. And so then I did, but like here in Wyoming, Walmart is as good as the grocery stores here. So it just kind of depends, but you know, you may have to drive. Like the other day they had a, our store is called Ridley's here and they had boneless skinless chicken breasts for 97 cents. 
And let me tell you, the two hour drive to Casper or Bill, uh, Gillette for me, for 97 cent chicken, if my freezer was empty, you can guarantee I'd be hauling over to Gillette or Casper, even if it's a four hour drive, because I would have saved so much money on chicken alone, mm -hmm. let alone all the rest of the shopping that we could have done. Mm -hmm. And so it, it would have been worth it. So, yeah. um, did you send me the and next I, batch, Mike? And I've never, I, until we moved here, I'd never shopped for my groceries at Walmart. I never bought anything at Walmart, hardly at all. I'd go to Aldi's and then the regular yeah. grocery store. In Kansas, store. it was Aldi for us, too. Yeah. So I just didn't do any. But here, I've had to do most of, a lot of my shopping at Walmart. Hello, Five says, I get chicken leg quarters for 85 cents at Walmart. So they're 69 here. And I know people around the country have been telling them they're getting them for 39 and 49 cents. So that's a really good way to save money. So mm -hmm. good job. Yeah. Esther, I made stuffed cabbage rolls since cabbage was on sale. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yes. I did not get any cabbage this time. I went to. Tell them what happened. When oh you my got goodness. Cabbage. Okay. Hold I, on. You, I'm going to go see if I can deal with my nose. Issue. Well, I'm telling them. Well, you know, I always get my cabbage on St. Patrick's Day, you know, or that week of because they have it on sale. And I went into Albertsons to get cabbage, my cabbage, and I walked over to it and it was, some of it looked black. And I thought, what in the world? And then I touched it. It was covered. They were all covered in ice crystals. <laughs> they were and I touched them and they were hard as a rock. They were frozen. I mean... And I wondered because the gal, I asked her where they were before I went to go get it. And I said, where, where's the cabbage that's on sale? She said, well, they're down there. But she said, we have some in the back room too. And I didn't know why she told me that. If they had a whole, they had a whole pile there. And I thought, why did she tell me they had some in the back room? And so they, it may have not been frozen. She may knew, know, she knew that they were frozen and was probably telling me that. But I didn't want to chance even the ones in the back room because these were really bad frozen. I mean, when they're black, big spots of black on them, and it wasn't mold. You could tell it was from freezing. <laughs> oh, I didn't get my cabbage. <laughs> Todd, I thought I was the cheapest person on earth. I may be beat here. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, Todd. Lives on $12,000 a year, nice house, never eat out. Yeah, that's what mom lives on. So. <laughs> that's good. Margaret, I only buy on sale, and it better be a good one. Yep. Mm -hmm. Denise, thank you. Mike, Tar, and Jill, all three of you are amazing. Allison, yes. You guys are so, so sweet. If I got volume two, okay, so this is volume one right here. I can't hold because of my wrist, but this is volume one, the first cookbook. So if you're going to start somewhere, start with this one. This is volume two, the companion. They are totally different recipes, but these are just all the recipes we couldn't fit in here. This is almost 600 pages. We couldn't add more to it. So this is the rest of the recipes that we wanted to put this in. This has a could. lot of tips in it. Basic well, both of them have a yeah, lot of tips. Yeah, they do have tips, but, but that one, that that's one has... How to, that's the beginners. The, yeah. Donna, what about buying meat in bulk at Sam's Club? So if you can get a good deal, fine. But I have never found Sam's or Costco to be a better deal than what's on sale. But I know people who do find stuff that is cheaper there, that's and that's where, fine. That's where it comes in to know your prices for the different places and different things. Yeah, says, thank you for everything you guys share. I bless you in Jesus' uh -oh. name. Well, thank, thank you. you. Patricia, I love you when I show up on the first, I love when I show up on the first day of sale and they never have the item begin with. I know. <gasps> Makes me so mad. <laughs> oh. Sorry, but. Especially when I made a special trip in, got up early in the morning and made a special trip well, in. Well, here's an even it. better one. What was it? Three months ago, two months ago, when I went for the 97 cent chicken, the guy didn't even know it was on sale. <laughs> He's like, well, what are you talking about? I said, the 97 cent chicken in today's ad. He said, there's no 97 cent chicken in the ad. I said, yes, there is. He said, no, there's not. I walk, had to go clear back up to the front of the store to the register, pick up an ad, haul it all the way back. And I said, it's right here. He said, oh, well, I had no idea, but we don't have any of that. I'm, I've got, I've got some, some chicken that I'm saving for somebody, but I can't give you it. Okay. Thanks a lot. So, um, all right, Patricia, uh, let's see. Uh, Duana says, Tara, what does the Alka-Seltzer do? It just helps. So when you take an Alka-Seltzer, 
Usually when you have a problem with your CFS or fibromyalgia, brain fog type thing, your body is too acidic and the Alka-Seltzer makes it more alkaline. So it balances your pH in your body and helps you focus. Better. I don't know what it does, but it really does help. Usually we take one before we take, do the show a lot of times because, um, you know, it's hard to think uh, answering questions and stuff. If you have brain fog to answer them and stuff like that. So we take an alka seltzer and it does help. Um, Patricia, our Winn-Dixie will hold meat if you ask. That's very nice. Yeah, that's Yay. good. Um, Sharon says my produce man is now my Facebook friend. <laughs> there you go. That's, <laughs> that's the way, the way to, do to do it. Yeah. Well, that's the way the restore guys, I gave him my phone number. I said, now this phone number doesn't go out to too many people. <laughs> you got something special here. <laughs> They've been great. I really appreciate them um, helping me out with my wind model. <laughs> the other, we went this morning to film our Thrifty Tuesday that's coming up on Tuesday with our new uh, videographer. And um, they were there and they're like, well, we haven't seen you in here for a while. <laughs> I'm like, I know I'm my kitchen and getting close to getting done. So now we're waiting on the big window to come, but hopefully next week they're going to start on the countertops. I think <laughs> Sarah says she loves my mug. Thank you. I'm so glad you like it. Um, just Vicky creating good relations with everyone. Your purchase is really great. Yep. Just do it just to do be nice to people. My yeah. Goodness. It's just Tracy. I use 7330. Yes. Tracy. We haven't had TV for years. Don't miss it. No internet. And let's get a hotspot from the library. Yep. Pam or Pen, I am currently listening to you washing dishes by hand, <laughs> putting them into the dishwasher rack to dry. Yep. Barbara, first time comment. Barbara from San Diego, I use cereal bags to vacuum seal foods. Does mm. that work? It the might. sacks are very strong. That it would might. be a cool experiment. We should do that I for a video to see if it works. Mm -hmm. They are thicker, so that would make sense. It would just be if they're sealable enough. Huh. Leah, because we got debt free and saved an emergency fund when my husband was leaving the army and his expected job fell through, we had savings that allowed us to buy an RV for our family. Wow. Oh, good. Very good. And because we were saving in the camper, we bought it with cash. We bought a house two years ago, a good price. Praise God for his providing super random, but have been want to thank you guys because you all are a big help. Oh, Aww, that's good. Thanks. And now see. Part of this, they prepared, they worked, you know, they saved. So when there was a problem, <laughs> they were prepared. It wasn't a catastrophe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I took home economics, we couldn't eat what we cooked until the dishes were done. Ooh, mm. we need to get them done fast, too, mm -hmm. so your food doesn't get cold. Um, Michelle, Tara, I use Flonase. Yeah, um, I think I'm going to have to start taking my allergy medicine, actually. Part of my problem is I have a cold, but the dust from the construction stuff has really been getting me hard uh katie in the 50s we lived in japan so did oh, mom yeah my mom said the meat they use more as a season than the main ingredient yes mm -hmm. use it as a use it as a flavoring type flavoring a little bit yeah. of flavor mm -hmm. cruise you guys take turns or what you guys are so funny i love you guys hello from tennessee thank, <laughs> thank you for you. ordering leah i used to make i just had to make cream of chicken oh yeah so like our cream of chicken soup right here is really good. And then we have our um, chicken with canned soup mix. I'm sorry. All these anti-cream soup mix people or soup people. I don't know what it is with the anti-cream soup that stuff. That stuff is good. good. <laughs> it tastes good. Now, I can't personally eat it because it's got dairy in it. But that stuff is good and it makes a good dinner. If you use our roast recipe and use a can of cream of mushroom soup, oh, it's really, really good. Mm -hmm. And we do have where you can make your own mm -hmm. cream, cream soup soups. mixes right here. Yeah. yeah. You, we have recipes in there to make graham crackers, to make your own soda crackers. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got all kinds yep. of things to make from scratch so that if you, if there is a shortage or something, you can find it probably in our book to make. Livianadime.com, that's where all the recipes are also. But guys, the books are on sale right now. 35% off for the print books and 50% off our ebooks. Uh Pirate, I'm not kidding. I've gone from spending $1,200 a month on Instacart to only spending $400 a month on groceries. Wow. Holy moly. That's, that's a lot. 
That's wow. Good. Margaret, my friend would not take her kids to McDonald's because it's too expensive for four kids. She bought it once and then used papers to wrap her own food to look like theirs. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's that's a good one. I haven't heard that one. That's okay, a good one. I'm not one. sure if that's genius <laughs> or you should be teaching your kids that it's okay to not buy that stuff. I mean, oh, that's good. I love it. Pretty much every day, my boys are like, Can we get Wendy's? No. Can we get Wendy's? No. Can we get Wendy's? So then no. they come to Nan. Then they come to Nan. <laughs> Misty, what am I missing? Why do you put a couple of tablespoons aside and then cut it? So, Misty, you just, you just, Take out a couple of tablespoons so that you're saving it in a freezer container for more meals. So, so just keep adding more tablespoons to that. And then you have a free. So after like five pound pounds of hamburger, of hamburger yeah. and you put a couple of tablespoons in that container, you've got kind of a free container of hamburger. Yeah. Or, yeah. So, All right. Mike, can you send me the next uh, batch, please? Yeah. Um, Michelle says somebody but, put their own chicken nuggets in it. McDonald's. <laughs> That's <laughs> hilarious. Now, talking about the hamburger and the gal that was mentioning they just use the meat for flavoring. See, that's why I cut back on a lot of my hamburger in my casseroles and things. Most families don't really notice if you go from a pound of hamburger to a half a pound of hamburger in a casserole or spaghetti sauce or something like that. They really don't know the difference, you know, that much. So that's that's a good way to save on meat, you know, when you do that. Uh, Michelle, where did you get your glasses? I got mine at Zenni, Z-E-N-N-I, optical.com. Although, and they do have the blue glasses there, but I'll tell you, I've been using them for 15 years. Had great luck with them. I've only, used them too. I, I probably only had... I probably out of a hundred glasses, I had two mistakes. And then, then when I sent them back, they were fixed the next time. But this pair, this is the fourth time they've made them. And I don't know if they've changed hands or what, but I was almost to the point where if these didn't work, I was going to have to go get them from the eye doctor. But my glasses are like $700 for these glasses. And they were only $70 at Zenny. So Gail, she loves the bean goulash in mm. volume one. Thank you. And Mary loves the chicken fried recipe. Why? Oh, no, that's not what she said. I'm sorry. I mixed two, two comments. <laughs> Mary, in your chicken fried recipe, why do we soak the chicken in salt water? What? I don't do that. I don't think we do that in our chicken fried recipe. I don't if know. we do, I can't there, remember. I don't something do must have got thing. messed up in one of the in one of the re uh, chicken. Oops, in one of the um, reprints. Reprints. All right, chicken. Is it two forty eight? Bean salad. Let's see. Okay, let me go look because I'm like, or that's regular fried chicken. Yeah. Chicken. Oh, that's under. Sorry. Hold on, just a moment. We don't have these books memorized, guys. Um. Well, after twenty-five years, you would think we would. I know, but, but there's so uh, much in there. Um. Okay. So chicken. Here. Here we go. Uh. Two twenty-six. Chicken, chicken fried dumplings, steak. Barbecue meatballs. Beef and pasta. Two, beef jerky. Two twenty-six. You do not. <laughs> no. Put some flour in a bowl with salt, pepper, and onion she powder. She said fried chicken, though. Did she say fried chicken steak? Or oh, fried, fried chicken. Chi oh, fried chicken. Yeah. I thought you were saying chicken fried steak. I'm sorry. So for the fried chicken, um, it kind of is a marinade is is what it is. It's like brining salt your chicken. Kind, so sometimes tenderizes things. Yeah. That's what a brine does. A brine is very, very salty, so it tenderizes. Yeah. So, okay. Sorry. I was thinking of the chicken fried steak. No, you said fried chicken. It's a recipe. new glasses. You really have. I'm having a hard time reading. with these. Normally, I don't. I'm. I'm not sure if they made them wrong again or what. But anyway, okay. Uh, cornbread needs honey. Yes, honey. Yeah, or honey or maple syrup, syrup is mm -hmm. both really good. I'm European, so I love American cuisine. I'm from the Netherlands. I am so sorry. I don't know how to pronounce your name, but thank you. <laughs> I went, to the, went to the Netherlands. I went to the Netherlands. Yeah, loved, she loved the Netherlands. I loved Holland. Oh, my I didn't goodness. think she was going to come back from there. I would have stayed in Holland. <laughs> Esther, what a trip. Like, oh, oh, Esther. This is the question everybody asks. We are going to just walk through this right now. 
what a trip like that would be worth considering for gas, gas prices. All right, let's just sit and do the math, shall we? All right. Now so you got to realize you when, you, out. when you make a trip like that, she's not just going and buying chicken. No, she's, but even if you were just going and buying chicken, would it be worth it? But so we can you let don't. you know. We can let you know. If I don't it's think worth you've it. ever done that before, though. Just bought chicken. I have it, but. If you just go for groceries, like we had to drive 70 miles each way for groceries in Idaho. So, I mean, we got other groceries, but we focused on what was the biggest sale items at, at that time. So it's 180 miles. Okay. You divide that by 20 miles to a gallon. That's nine gallons of gas. We'll say 350. That's on the high side for most people right now for a gallon of gas. So $31 in gas for us to drive to Casper Gillette, which is 90 miles each way. So that's $31. So let's say chicken right now is $349 a pound, I think is what I last saw it. $349 a pound. And let's say you got 10 pounds of chicken. That would be $34.90. But it costs you $30 in, in gas. So your chicken, you would have to get 50 pounds of chicken or more to drive to Gillette. Yeah, just you don't the just buy one package when you go. But if I, if my freezer was empty and I filled my freezer with 100 pounds of chicken, I would save, let's see, it would be $100. So I would save $70. No, wait, no, 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 wait. I did that wrong. $349 times a hundred pounds is $349. So I would say $300. No, $200. I would say $200. So by the time I take off my gas and then I pay for the 97 cent chicken, I would save $200 for me driving to the big city to fill up my freezer. Now I'm not saying, I'm not saying that the normal person has to do that all the time. But if you're really serious about saving money, you have to sit and figure these things out. This math was literally two minutes worth of math to figure out if it would save or not. If I was going and getting, what did I say my first number was? 10 pounds of chicken. If I was going and just getting 10 pounds of chicken, it's not worth driving no. to Gillette two hours away for 10 pounds of chicken. Is it worth driving for 100 pounds of chicken? Yes. So that's how you figure it out. Mm -hmm. Um, Sharon says collards, pinto, green, pinto beans, potatoes, and cornbread today. Good old country cooking. Wow. That is, that country is as you can get. good old Southern cooking. Uh, no, Darlene, we don't do, uh, bread re machine recipes because most people don't have bread machines anymore. <laughs> Our bread book does, but is it up for sale now? I mean, you got the bread book up. Yeah. Oh, so Mike said, um, that I didn't know our bread book was listed yet, but we have a um, how to make bread, homemade bread ebook that he just got up a couple of days ago or a couple of weeks ago, and um, it is half price right now. So you can go get yeah, some bread recipes. Check in those there. ebooks out. We've got laundry, we've got cleaning supplies, we've got just cleaning in general, we've got menu plan. Hundred. We one, I told you last night there was one of them that's a hundred and five menu plans that yep. wrote. You know, we've got, and we got several of those menu plan books. If you have chicken, need chicken menus, if you need what other types of menus, mm -hmm. we've got a whole booklet ebook in there. And they're just like a dollar. Some of them are, you know, yep. just Vicky on the subject of eyes. My left eyelid has puffed up and is red and very sensitive. I think he is thigh. Oh. Well, I'm not a doctor, but if it was me in that position, what I would do is get a really a hot oh, marsh egg, right. as hot as I can stand and then hold it on there. Go wet it again. If you can do that do for, for five or 10 minutes, several times a day, mm -hmm. like three to five times a day. But here's the thing. Get a new washcloth every single time. So as it starts clearing up, you're not continuing to spread, respread the infection and make sure you wash your hands and disinfect everything. So you're not spreading it also. Um, Angie, one of our stores here in Canada, they will hide the price on the backs of the items on the no-name brand, so you have to look for the price. Oh my God. Also, I've noticed they will have two different spots in the store and one cheaper for meat. 
wow, you really do have to look around. Yeah, and you're doing good by watching for that type of stuff. Yeah. You have to really check. That's good. She loves our advice. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Mary, I need a new stove and refuse to get them on credit. Saving up the dollars. Very good. That's good. good. You're doing good. There are by so many appliances now. Really, I was only half joking the other day when I said, do you really need a kitchen? You really don't need a kitchen anymore. Really, you don't. There are so many little appliances now that anybody can cook pretty much anywhere. So, um, Jessica, Canadian here. I got meat on sale by shop shopping at 7 a.m. last Saturday, $35. Very I got good. two packages of chicken breast, two packages of chicken wings, a package wow. of hamburger, a roast, and two steaks. My goodness, that was good. Yeah. Yeah. Richard, any plans on writing another cookbook or two? Not at the moment. <laughs> I just don't have time with doing videos. Um, pirate, I spent $1,200 last month at St Sam's and Costco, and it was a ripoff. Yeah. they Sam's and Costco really doesn't save you money. No. Not really. The you thing can, is, but... The thing is, with them, people think they're saving, doing a lot of savings and stuff, but if you just watch your couple of grocery store ads, you'll get the same type of thing, you know, by just doing yeah. that instead Peg of all the hassle of going to Taco. Yep. I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's Peg, um, Peg says, we love the Mexican casserole in book one. Isn't mm. that delicious? My family loves that. Also, Angel on a Mission, I guess she just got 40 pounds of chicken leg quarters for 45 cents. See? Wow. Yep. Good. Lori, when our grocery bill climbed to $2,500, oh, 25 Swiss, Swiss francs a month, I nearly died. Then I changed where and how I was shopping. When I was cooking, now some months are under seven hundred. Very good, I think. You guys, you guys, <laughs> I have no idea how much. <coughs> okay, let's. But you know what I liked about that was you were changing and switching and doing stuff to try to get yeah. you know it down, and that's what you have to do. Is all these testimonies? I love listening to them because they're giving good ideas. They're working at this. You see, they just have learned how to work at this yeah. and you've got to do it where the people that say, well, I just can't do this here where I live. They're just sitting there. They don't want to do the, put in the effort. And if you're going to save, if you're going to do anything, you have to put some effort in. And so you have a choice of either working a second job to pay for your groceries every month or putting in a couple of hours, you know, of being careful on your grocery shopping mm -hmm. and doing that type of thing. So it's going to take work whichever way you do it. You can either work an extra job to pay for them or put in a little tiny bit of work to do the ads and stuff. So Lori, if you're using Swiss francs, you must be in Switzerland. <laughs> you think? And I have actually been to Switzerland. Deduction. I was only there like two days or something. But that, I have no desire to really travel anymore. But I would love to go to Switzerland in the summer. I, the, when I went, it was on New Year's. And I would love to go to Switzerland in the, in the, um, so if you want to trade houses sometime, just let <laughs> me know. We have a full apartment in our basement. <laughs> Laura, I made your taco seasoning yesterday. Volume one, big mm -hmm. batch. Now I have a whole bunch for the next couple of months. The meat turned out delicious. Thank you. Oh, good. I'm glad. Uh, Lynn, have you ever had a live about how you use your food saver? No, we haven't. Because our videos like that, people don't want to see. We can maybe start adding them in with our tight wad Tuesdays, possibly. We might start doing some of that. Mm -hmm. Tanya, have you ever tried baking soda water instead of Alka-Seltzer? Yes. When I run out of Alka-Seltzer, I will just take baking soda water and it works just fine. Uh, let's see. Oh, Duana says for use horseradish for your cold. I haven't heard that one, but I can see how that would work. Yeah, it clears every it clears everything. Maybe out. we should go get sushi for date night tonight, dear, and get some of the wasabi and woo. <laughs> I will open up my nasal passages, which could be a really bad thing. Yeah, at a restaurant that'd be a scary thing. Mary, I'm thinking of buying a small freezer for my husband and I to take advantage of sales. Do you think it would be a good purchase now? It depends. I use my freezer all the time, and I'm pretty sure when the kids are gone, I will continue to use it. My grandmother used her freezer all the time, and she absolutely loves it. My aunt, who was by herself, loved her freezer, but mom doesn't like hers, doesn't like a separate freezer. So it just depends mm -hmm. on if you actually think you will use it or not. What is your lifestyle like? Do you have a lot of yeah. company? Do you cook a lot for a lot of people? See, everybody that she mentioned does a lot of entertainment or would fix meals and stuff. And so it just, for example, 
do you keep your regular refrigerator freezer packed all the time and use out of it? You know, if you do and you find yourself constantly needing more freezer room, then it might be worth it to buy yeah. a small one. Penn says, I recently heard someone comment that sales cycles are changing. Have I seen this? No, I have not seen this yet, but I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, it, they could be doing I, Well, I will say, yes, I have seen it. So, so it used to be butter would go on sale about every two months. And now it seems like butter's going on sale every four to six months. So yeah, I guess I have seen for butter, I have seen it change. Milk and cheese are still pretty on target. And meats are and about the same. And chicken. I, mm -hmm. Butter's the only thing I've seen it. Have you seen anything else? Uh, cottage cheese and cream cheese kind of. Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen. Well, I don't use those hardly now anymore, but uh tanya's life have you seen the new movie left behind it came out about a month ago so what are your thoughts i have not seen it but i will say i uh if kevin sorba was the one who produced it and i trust him a lot from what i've seen on his christian views are just like ours so i would say that he he probably did a really good job with it i would trust him but I haven't seen it, so I don't know. It Speaking didn't come to our city, so we didn't get to see it. Speaking of movies, you know when you were talking about the movies the other day? I thought one good movie I love so much. And the thing is, it's a true story. And I very rarely watch true story movies because my movies have to be <clears throat> all pretend. <clears throat> and so what it was is Cool Runnings. Oh, my favorite. That's one of my I favorite ones. I love Cool Runnings. If you guys... I would say Princess Bride <laughs> and then Cool, cool Runnings, Runnings. And then Mr. Blanding's Built His Dream Home. Mr. Blanding's, yeah. Now. But if you guys... I, if you're feeling discouraged and overwhelmed and think the world is a falling Cool Runnings pieces, is my theme you movie. You've <laughs> got to watch Cool Runnings because you will, you will look at the whole world different after you watch Cool Runnings. It's yeah. like... The most inspiring thing I think I and the greatest and funny yeah and funny oh my goodness and the greatest showman I would say actually did you ever watch that no, I never saw oh that. I would say the greatest showman would be right up there also and all four of those I would consider equally but the greatest showman I I like the greatest showman because it shows how someone can come from nothing literally destitute on the streets build themselves up build this huge empire, lose everything. Spoiler alert. And then, <laughs> Spoiler alert. well, they haven't seen it by now, but still lose everything and then come back again. I think, now I know it's not totally based on reality. I totally get that as far as following what's his name's um, life. I get that. But it just shows, it's kind of the point that we keep trying to tell people. It doesn't matter how low you have sunk. I don't care if you are homeless living in a tent. You can make up your mind to get yourself out of the hole if you want to. And it's going to be some work. And I'm not going to tell you it's not going to be work. Mm -hmm. But you can do it if you want yeah. to. It's like yesterday when I was talking about my editor from the Philippines. He said, you know, I, he, he was telling me, he said, um, yeah, I've learned so much from you. I'm like, well, you've learned from us. I, was, I said, well, I was thinking we would learn a lot from you guys. He's like, well, well really, like what? And I said, oh, I was just curious. How do you guys, you know, buy clothes? I know you're a really poor country. So how do you do things like clothes and shoes and, and that type of thing? He said, well, we hand down clothes from the grandparents to the kids, to the grandchildren. And, and we all share shoes and everything. And, and he said, we do it so that we can buy food. Mm. And, you know, you're going to be hearing that story a lot. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't care what... I don't care how poor you are. If you're watching this video, you're not so poor that you can't do something to improve your life. Mm -hmm. You, There is something you can do to improve your life. Like my Filipino editor, he got a job working for an American online to help his family. And from what I understand, I'm not positive on this. I think he completely supports his family. His mom had a stroke, and I think he's the one that supports his family, if I understand right. 
And so there's something that you can do to pull yeah. yourself and that's, out. That's the way Cool Runnings was, too. It's the type, they had the awfulest stuff compared to these wealthy people that had the fancy stuff. And they were going against the very best. Mm -hmm. And they didn't say, we can't do this. They kept yeah. doing it. And they kept having more things happen to them that was awful and really unfair. That's what I liked about it. It was unfair what they had mm -hmm. happened to them. And, so, yeah. and they still kept a good attitude, got kept up going. again, and kept going. Yeah. And so really, yeah. I really encourage you. where we watch it. Cool Runnings? Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember. We may have bought a DVD at a garage sale or something one time. I can't remember. Sandra, we got our freezer free in Illinois at Jewel years ago. Springtime, they were giving away a free freezer or grill with the purchase of food. Wow. wow. That's not good. sure if they do that anymore. I never heard of that one. But that would, I mean, and think about those things. If you actually need a freezer, and let's say you have to buy $500 worth of food or something, and they give you a freezer, well, sit and figure if that's a $400 freezer, and you buy $500 worth of food, that's definitely, you know, worth yeah, it. Yeah, it is. Uh, I think it's Shay says, we're going to be trying the vanilla wafers. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> it is so good. I found that recipe from Martha Stewart. Adapted it from Martha Stewart. Mine's better. But <laughs> 30 years ago, I got that. I have the little clipping still, just like mom and I were talking about her little clip. So mom had the clipping of I the, know. it was mom's recipe, the peachy pork chops. And you had the clipping. I found from where it. did you get it? Better Homes and Garden magazine. They used to put recipes <laughs> with a picture and everything, and you'd cut them out. They made them so you could cut them out. It was about 50 years old. <laughs> so it's all tattered and yeah. Next, next set, Mike. Andrew, I've learned a lot from you guys and everything you say makes sense. Thank you. Who is Thank more you. knowledgeable? Me. Oh, listen. No hesitation. Listen. Who's had more experience and knowledge? Who's more knowledgeable? Me. Mm-hmm. I told him it was me. Who taught you everything you know? <laughs> Mike says it's him. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Who taught you everything you know? See, that's a good me. one. <laughs> um, okay, Mike's sending me the next set of questions. I will look here while they are arriving into me. Oh, listen to that, Michael. <laughs> Jim says, I lost a lot of weight when he had kidney cancer surgery. His wife, Robin, bought a few pairs of pants at the thrift store. They were $2. Too. A bag, so she got them cheap. They had a two dollar bag sale. Wow! Oh, so you got them for like really cheap? Yeah. I don't. You don't say how many pairs you got, but still, wow. That's good. That's I, really I'm good. I'm so glad you're doing better, Jim. That's really good. Um, what about Bob? Yeah, that's a good movie. Yeah, I like that one, especially when he blows himself up. Did you see the clothes you put in? <laughs> What about Bob? Baby steps, I know. <laughs> I know. Susan paid off her mortgage a couple of years ago. She just paid off her student loans. She's 100% debt free. Good oh, job. that's so good. Susie, oh, I vacuum goodness. seal my frozen vegetables, potato chips in their original, original bags. How do you vacuum seal potato chips? Well, what happens is you can you can draw it out a little bit. It does not. It's not so much that it'll crush it, There's, but you can get I guess some if of you it. Get them in a jar and you can something? reseal the, if nothing mm -hmm. else, you reseal the package hmm. you can it has a thing on there where you can just seal the package shut hmm. sandra what time i test you purchased your glasses online just a regular eye doctor and he gives you your prescription then you just fill it in online you just it's just paste all you do is just copy and paste yeah you go to the eye doctor get, get your, your eye doctor prescription yeah. and then you go online and you fill in what they want Victor from the prescription victoria says she just knows we have a recipe for wheat crackers in volume one can't wait to try it it's really good mm -hmm. that was one of my favorite recipes before i went gluten-free we have a lot of crackers and stuff like that that from you can make and they're from tasty scratch. yeah they're, they're really good. tasty uh and they are a slightly more work than some of the super super easy recipes but they're still not horribly they're, bad they're just good to have in case you can't find this stuff you know ever yep um Terrific I think we Tarsha. have backs in there too, don't yeah. we? Oh, I, back. Back. I love yeah. I wish I, I should can't try find them make, anymore. I should try to make that gluten-free. I haven't made gluten-free Zweeback. Maybe that, because that would work pretty good. Yeah. Wanda, do bread machines do the kneading? Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. And Terrific Tosser says she loves our kitchen display. So you guys can't see it because we're so up close. But here's the whole, let's see. You want me to uh, duck or something? Oh, never mind. I can't zoom out. I thought I could zoom out, but it's actually really cute. We thought we were going to be on a different table and we changed tables. And so 
now we did all that work for nothing. We worked so hard on that. It was so hot. It was we worked so very hard. Frustrating. <laughs> um, Christina just finished watching our thrift store find videos while tidying up the kitchen. Yay! Yay, yay, yay. I love it that you're tidying up the kitchen while watching the videos. So Holy that's... cow, she's a Michiganer. Michigander. How do you say that? Living in Spain. Oh, Ooh. wow. Maybe I could go to Spain to sit on the beach for a month or two. You don't like the beach, remember? The I sand? don't, but I'm feeling the call to the beach. Maybe I, I could, could sit in the Spain. I Sarah loves your sweater. Oh, thank you. You look nice. Thank you. Barbara. This is one, this is one of my cashmere sweaters that I pay, pay like I think $1.99 for. There you go. So good. Barbara wants to know, is it a bad idea to toast frozen waffles in a frying pan? No. Mm -mm. And do it the old-fashioned girl's scout way where you sprinkle salt and then that'll help um i don't know what the salt does but it does make okay. if you do toast or anything like that it browns yeah. it the perfect like a toaster brown um and then she wants to know what seasonings to use for roast you can use anything you want i use onion garlic and salt most of the time that's what i use you could add a bottle of catalina dressing you could add cream of whatever mixes, cream of chicken soup mix. You can add cream of mushroom soup mix. You could add cream of celery soup mix. Another good one is French to poke soup mix. holes into the roast garlic. and put garlic yep. and jal um, jalapeno peppers that you get in the jar. That's really good. Put those in there. Oh, my goodness. That's really good. And one thing, too, you don't need to season a lot of things like this a whole lot because the salt and the onion salt and garlic mm. salt just enhances the roast flavor and you get the real roast flavor, which is sometimes good just to taste mm -hmm. that, you know, than to have a whole lot of seasonings. I think uh, years ago, like when Julia <coughs> Childs came out and all those chefs and that type of thing, they, at that same time, they were getting rid of, you couldn't have any fat, you couldn't have any salt and you couldn't have this or that. And they took so you all no these, seasoning. You yeah, no taste. So you had nothing in these <laughs> foods. So people started making sauces and brines and marinades to put, trying to get the flavor back because they couldn't use the salt or anything or put fat into it. So if you just do the regular salt and let the fat be on the roast, you know, these things taste really good without much. And that saves you money because you're not having to buy all these extra stuff to put in it. That's why grandma always just, she just threw the roast in the pan with the potatoes and the carrots and called it good. So, <laughs> Well, Lori, I think I'll be on my way soon. She says, I do have a guest suite apartment with a private interest here in Switzerland. <laughs> we nearly finished remodeling. Just saying, our view of the Alps is spectacular. Oh um, it takes three weeks to get the cheap tickets. What is today? <laughs> it is eight, no, what month are we? March. Oh, Mike, Mike says he'll be happy to Mike's send Mike's happy to send me. So oh, I will be today. there May 1st. Oh no, we have to go to Colorado for grandma's birthday. Oh, you can leave have to go to her. <laughs> We have to go to Colorado the first so you week can, of May. She has to Let's leave from see. Denver to fly there. So. The airport's only 30 miles from there. So, oh, that's a no-brainer. <laughs> Love you, family. I'll be back in <coughs> October. <laughs> I'll be back in October. Then I don't get to enjoy my new kitchen. Oh, my goodness. Um, can you imagine what Mike and the boys would do to your new kitchen while you're gone? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Probably nothing because they would all use the air fryer. They love the air fryer. <laughs> Where they go out to eat. Yeah. Well, are you Sorry. okay? I'm fine. We were just having a time today. My goodness. Um, guys, don't it's forget our been... cookbooks are on sale for our Saving of the Green sale right here. 35% off right now. 50% off our ebooks and our e-course. Yes, Kat, the price book is printable. And just get one of those folders with the little three re things and put, a, put them in there. Um. Huh? The eleventh? Oh, we're going the first week of May to Colorado. Yeah. Oh, Mike's checking prices. Oh yes. Let's let's check prices for May fifth. Try May fifth. How much is it to Switzerland? Does Switzerland even have an airport? Well, yeah. And Zurich. Oh yeah, Zurich would have an airport, wouldn't they? They would, wouldn't they? Oh, Geneva is, or Zurich. <laughs> I didn't know. 
No offense. I don't know my Swiss. It might be cheaper to fly to Paris and take the train. Well, that's what I'm wondering. It might be How cheaper to. Be for you? How sad would it be to fly to Paris and take a train? Oh, could you <laughs> see a, me trying to figure out a, pair, uh, a train in Paris? Ellie and you will escort me to Paris, put me on the train to Switzerland, Switzerland and then you guys will conquer stay. Europe. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, a Home of Our Own is a good movie. I think I remember. I think we saw that. Yeah. I can't remember what it was, but it sounds I familiar. I know. Uh, Sarah says, I watched your appliance show you did. What to buy? And I took notes. Learned a lot. Actually, we have good. more in that series coming. And you guys, if you like those two, you need to actually watch the other ones that are coming because that's even more information that's even more valuable than what we've put out already. It's like the tips he gives on maintaining your appliances is unbelievable. It's really unbelievable. Well, just, I was going to say of the other ones, the best part of it was when he told about not using Windex, you know, that can save yeah. a lot of people headache. Yeah. Except that wasn't supposed to be in there. That's the next video coming up. <laughs> I know I messed up on that. Um, I know you're going to say, let's see. Oh, and so then she goes on to say, I want to buy a condo, which they are going to, which they are building some in my area soon and know what to buy helps. I know you're going to say, what about HOA fees? I don't want to mow because I don't have a lot of time for that. Yeah, and that's fine. Yeah. What people don't realize is we don't really have a problem with HOA. Well, I have a problem with HOAs. I'm never doing one again. But for places where they mow and clean your yeah. sidewalks and all of that, it may be yeah. a good thing for you to pay three or four hundred dollars a month for those, for those conveniences. Services. Yeah. And we and had, some people may need them too, you know. So and we had a person comment and say, I'm so glad you guys still do your things. All these frugal channels say they're buying their time back by having people mow their lawn and um do their house cleaning and stuff like that. Well, let me tell you, if you make one or two hundred dollars an hour. And it costs twenty dollars an hour for someone to clean or mow your house. Quite frankly, you're stupid mow your to yard not. Or clean your house. Or I mean, mow your yard or clean your house. You're stupid to not hire them if you could be working those hours instead. Mm -hmm. Now, if like for us, I like doing yard work. Mike likes mowing. It's kind of relaxing for us. We kind of do it for entertainment. That's. That shows sad. how absolutely That's pitiful sad. our lives are. That's really pitiful. But, <laughs> <laughs> but now I've just realized how sad my life is. But you know, um, you would be dumb to not earn a hundred dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. And not to pay someone twenty dollars an hour, so you're netting eighty dollars an hour. Then that yeah. you know that just doesn't even make sense. So, so I don't fault them at all. Now, if they're going into debt or not doing that kind of stuff, then I have a problem with it. But mm -hmm. um, <laughs> cooking with cat lover, you changed your name again. See, I told <laughs> you that would be a good name. I think that's a good name. Tara on a train to Switzerland alone sounds like I love. Lucy movie. Oh, oh my goodness. can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine? That would be awful. <laughs> Mike said I would end up in Casablanca. <laughs> Actually, for me, I would probably end up at the North Pole <laughs> or the South Pole. I don't know what pole is closer. Some pole is closer over there, isn't it? I don't know. Um, but anyway, um, G.S. I think my research that I may need to go gluten-free. My stomach kills me after you eat. Yes. Try going gluten-free. All of our recipes are trying true. But listen, don't make it hard. Make it easy on yourself. Fry. Just use some. Just make some homemade chicken. Don't put any sauces or seasoning except garlic, onion, and salt on it. Garlic powder, onions, onion powder, and salt on it. And then... Roast your chicken in that, make yourself some rice and get yourself some ghee, which is butter that's been clarified. The milk protein is out. If you can't do dairy, if you think you can do every dairy, then just do butter. But well, even make the chicken it simple. Juice. 
or the chicken, chicken juice instead the of the chicken ghee, fat. Just make it even easier and put the chicken fat on there. Or, but really if good. she's doing chicken breast, she won't have chicken fat. Oh, but yeah. if you do drumsticks, you'll have tons of chicken fat, which is really good on there. Yeah, it tastes really good. It's really not that difficult. Believe me, it's really, really not that difficult. They have gluten-free everything now, like pasta is super easy. Just get you some pasta. Come up with five meals, Past, gluten-free pasta shells with pasta sauce, chicken and rice, tacos. Well, aren't mashed potatoes gluten-free? Yeah. You wouldn't even have to. I you never use rice. Potatoes, you can do yeah. mashed potatoes instead and not even get the, But we eat rice because <laughs> you um, eat rice and pasta. And mashed potatoes, you can have baked potatoes for one dinner. Sweet potatoes. You can have sweet potatoes for all kinds of like vegetables that. and fruits. So, so don't hamburger patties with gluten-free buns or just patties by themselves. Just eat the hamburger patty by itself. See, I've never understand all these special diets. Everybody trying to figure out how to make make these things. What they're wanting to do is make. They want to have all the food they could eat before, and they want, but it's not going to maybe work. Now, the cookbook does help, Tara's gluten-free cookbook, but start out but with... start out easy. Just real simple. There's so many fruits and vegetables for most of these diets that you can eat tons of fruits and vegetables, potatoes and sweet potatoes, like we were mentioning, turnips, carrots, celery, you know, on all the fruits, and then meats. Usually, you meats are pretty easy, things like that. So, uh, even like tuna salad, you don't have to have a tuna salad sandwich. You can just put it on a piece of lettuce. And do things like that. You can put eggs, well, yeah, egg salad on a, or mm -hmm. chop some egg on a Tuna piece salad, of lettuce. Tuna salad, egg salad, you know. chicken salad. There's so many things you can eat without having to do make special foods for it. Yeah, that, I love mayonnaise, so I just okay. put mayonnaise on everything for my dressing. And so... It's like when you find out you have to do like diet... Uh, no, diabetic diet. Yeah. Everybody just panics and thinks, oh, what am I? I need these special recipes. You don't. You can eat regular food. You just cut out a few things, you know, that you're not supposed well, to have. And like we got a letter in the mail and six, 16 or 17 pages. I can't remember. Mom counted. And um, it was extremely detailed in what this person spends. And mom and I were just like, who has time for this? And it was a really nice letter, but don't make, make things so, so complicated. complicated. Just stop making stuff complicated. Yeah, stop we... making your budget complicated. As a matter of fact, I came up with a brilliant idea today. And tell me real quick, guys, before we go. But I think we're going to do a budgeting e-course on how to budget. Because people make it so complicated <sighs> that they can't see how simple it is. They really can't. And we have never done a budgeting thing because, quite frankly, we don't budget because it's simple. Yeah. If you don't have, have the, the cash, money, you, you don't, don't buy it. Spend it. <laughs> if you don't have the cash to buy it, you don't spend it. If you're in debt, you don't buy it. Period. If you're having to make that tight of a budget, you don't budget money for a vacation. I mean, that's... You don't go on vacation. Yeah. Or, you know, for special clothes and stuff like that. You don't make these... It don't happen. And mm -mm. so I'm sorry if you have to wear the same four or five shirts and two pairs of pants and five underwear over and over again because you're a hundred thousand dollars in debt, you're not buying any clothes. Yeah, you're gonna throw them in the washer every five days and go through the cycle again. I'm serious. Yeah, but but people just don't want to do that. So Lori says the TGV, the train from Paris to Basel, Basel, Switzerland is quite expensive. Basel has the third largest airport in Switzerland. Lovely scenery on the right, though. Well, mm. there we know not to take that train when I go visit her. <laughs> uh, um, let's see. Okay. I have no, okay, sorry. Um, Lee says, paid off student loans, car loans, return the car to the dealer after seven years for a great price, lowered car insurance, dropping collision, I've been stocking up since January, and have a great stash. That wow. Great. Now, you're you're one of those people that are really going for and it. Cynthia says, my husband works oil and gas industry here in Canada. He gets a warning when the layoffs happen, so we put half his paycheck in the savings. They are saving half their paycheck, people. Do you hear that? <laughs> you can do it. You can. You can do it. Yeah. So we put half his paycheck in the savings and we stockpile for hard times. See, it's all about 
be prepared for this stuff. Everybody says, what, you know, what are you doing for this or that or whatever? And are you worried about inflation or we're not, we have got everything we need right now, you know, and we're doing fine. And we've got even some prepared for the future. And what happens is not only are most people not preparing, they're getting their finances so bad that they should have paid them off like 20 years ago, the stuff, the loans and things they have. So they're, you're backpedaling is what you're doing. You're not going but get forward. started now. Yeah. You're backpedaling, but you can change the direction, right? All these people that are given these wonderful testimonies, they have done it. I mean, they're perfect examples. Yeah. So Mike, this is it. Yeah. Um, okay. Let me check on this last. Uh, uh, Barbara says on the Cool Runnings movie, she remembers when uh, the bobsled guy always had to have his lucky egg. I know. I know. Funny. I forgot about the lucky I egg. I love them. The Cool Runnings was so yes. hilarious. Greta says, yes, a budget e-course, please. I don't know. Does anybody else want a budget e-course? Because ours, let me tell you, <laughs> our budget e-course... <laughs> Would not be like anybody else's budget no, e-course. I guarantee it. <laughs> Our budget e-course is actually something you can use in real life. It's not just writing numbers on paper, but and you know we I would have that. We would have that because I know that helps a lot of people. But but I've seen people people that have pages and pages of a the budget. They've had they've done the envelope. Some people that works for. But they do all these fancy spreadsheets. They do all of this. They do all that. And like I said, some people that does help. But those things get so complicated that, you know, you don't, the amount of time you spent doing that, writing those things out and put printing them out and all that, you could have been doing something else easier to save money, you know, and yeah. Um, wow, everybody's saying a budget e-course, no budget e-course, unless you use me on about $9,000 a year. Yeah, that's what mom lives on. I mean, you know, so, I mean, she gets more than that now, but that's what she lived on. Mm -hmm. And, um, <coughs> sorry. And so, um, the thing is, We have a lot of people who are low, low income, but that's not the majority. The majority of our viewers make over a hundred thousand dollars a year. And so that's why we're like, guys, you have the money. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be suffering. And a lot of our viewers are like that. They are, they have their act together. Well, you can tell from the but, testimonies we've been reading. Yeah. These people so. have been with us, some of them a long time and they're doing great. They started a lot years ago and they've got everything taken care of. You know, yep. you're doing good. You're doing good. I'm low income, but it works, Michelle says. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. All right, guys, check out our sale right now, Saving the Green Cell, 35% off print books, 50% off our ebooks, and 10% off our planner, 400 page planner, 365 days undated. So you don't lose any days. You can start tomorrow and you won't lose any days. Living on a dime.com. We will see you guys on Monday. Bye, -bye guys. Bye. Love you.